Hi, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by. You know, a home theater PC can add some really nice multimedia capabilities to that standard TV and DVD setup in your living room. Today, we're gonna give you a high-level overview on how to build a home theater PC. And we've got a couple different form factors. The first is this media center style case from Vitabox. It looks a lot like a standard audio component that you might have in your stereo system. Flip down this front bezel to reveal a multi-format flash card reader, a pair of USB ports here. You've got a power button, a couple of indicator lights for hard drive and power and reset button and then of course an optical drive bay with an eject button on the front. So again, looks a lot like one of your standard audio components will blend in with the rest of your audio equipment in your entertainment center. We also have this thermal take Element Q, which is sort of like a small form factor PC style chassis, reminiscent of a, a shuttle uh, computer type chassis if you're familiar with that company and in the front here you've got a pair of USB ports a couple of audio jacks reset button power button and again space for that uh, optical drive right here in this slot so two very different style chassis with very different uh, layouts inside and let's take a look at that next the motherboards we've chosen for our system build are a pair of Intel desktop brand motherboards on the left is the mini ITX Intel DH57JG motherboard. It's based on the Intel H57 Express chipset that supports Intel Core i5-600 and Core i3-500 series processors in this LGA1156 socket right here. Back here are a pair of DDR3 DIMM slots for system memory and a single by 16 PCI Express graphics slot over here. There are four 3 gig SATA ports right here and a myriad of I.O. connectivity options on the back plate. It's quite a bit that's packed into this little board. There's actually 10 channel surround sound, 7.1 plus 2, high definition audio, six USB ports, an eSATA port, which is great for external storage expansion, HDMI output, DVI output, and a single gigabit ethernet jack. On the right is the Intel DH55TC motherboard. It's a micro ATX motherboard based on the Intel H55 Express chipset and supports Intel Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3 series processors, also in that LGA1156 socket. The board has four DDR3 DIMM sockets, a single by 16 PCI Express graphic slot, a pair of by one PCI Express slots, and a single PCI slot. The board has six 3 gig SATA ports back here, and again, a wealth of connectivity on that I.O. backplate. You've got eight channel surround sound, high definition audio, six USB ports again, gigabit ethernet, HDMI output, DVI, VGA output as well, and a PS2, a legacy PS2 keyboard port. Both boards we're going to be powering with an Intel Core i5-661 series processor. This is a dual core, physical dual core processor that supports four logical processor cores with Intel hyper-threading technology, so two threads per core. This is a processor that's clocked at 3.33 gigahertz, which is kind of overkill, frankly, for a home theater PC application, but this is a fairly power uh, efficient chip and uh, will actually be you know very robust for our application all right so here are the rest of the components for our system builds let's talk power supplies first for the Vitabox case we get to work with a standard ATX power supply there so we've opted for the OCZ mod extreme pro 500 watt ATX power supply which is plenty enough power for a home theater PC and the nice thing is this is a modular power supply that allows you to connect only the cabling for the peripherals you need inside your case and you don't connect what you don't need. So it keeps our cabling and routing efficient, which is critical inside of a tight home theater PC. The Thermaltake Element Q comes with its own 250 watt power supply, which is nice as well, but you need to be concerned about the height restriction here in and around the motherboard area, specifically as it relates to heat sinks. We're going with a stock Intel retail Core i5 processor heatsink you can see right here. It's actually fairly low profile and the good news is once we snapped it down on the motherboard it just barely fit underneath the power supply in the thermal take element Q. So good news is stock retail Intel heat, heat sinks will work with the thermal take element Q. Storage. We're going with Western Digital's one terabyte 7200 RPM SATA hard drive. 
This is plenty enough storage for an OS volume on a home theater PC. We'll give you some capacity for storing a few movies on there. And of course, you can go with external storage via eSATA or USB connections as well if you need some additional expansion. OCZ's PC3-10666 DDR31333 system memory is what we're going with for our RAM. And this is a dual channel 4 gig kit, 2 gigs per stick from OCZ. This is low voltage DDR3-1333 system memory. Again, from OCZ. Optical, we are going with a light-on Blu-ray combo CD-DVD-ROM drive. This is a 4X Blu-ray player, and it is also a CD and DVD-ROM player and burner. About $70 at Newegg, and we've got one each uh, for each system. So, nice there, good find. And graphics. Um, now, the Core i5 family of processors does have onboard graphics, which are plenty powerful enough for things like high-definition digital video. However, we decided we're going to power our machines with a little bit more oomph for gaming. And we've gone with a pair of AMD ATI Radeon graphics cards. For the Vitabox chassis, we've got that height restriction. This is a half-height PCI Express card. It is an AMD ATI Radeon HD 5570 graphics card. And so it'll give us a little bit more power for gaming. It's got DVI as well as HDMI output. And the good news is, the nice thing is with HDMI, you connect both the video and audio signal off of one cable there with HDMI. And for the Thermaltake Element Q, we've got a little bit more height to work with, so we can go with a full height PCI Express graphics card. And this is an AMD Radeon HD uh, 5670 graphics card, a little bit more horsepower than the 5570 has DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort output. And uh, again, we're going with HDMI. Both cards don't require any external power and get all their power through the PCI Express graphics slot. So there you have it. We'll show you how to assemble a few of these components next. Okay, so we've gone ahead and mounted the motherboard inside the Vitabox chassis as well. And now we'll go about installing our Intel Core i5 processor chips. If you take a look right here on the corner of the package, you can see a little arrow that indicates pin 1 or pad 1 in this case on an LGA 1156 Intel Core i5 based processor. And we'll drop this into the socket and align it with the same arrow or triangle up here on the top corner of the socket. Flip this hatch down and we're good to go with that processor. We've gone ahead and installed the same processor over here on the Thermaltake Element Q. And we'll go ahead and snap in our Intel processor heat sink and fan assembly. Just line up these little press fit connectors with the mounting holes in the motherboard and snap in each of them. So you hear a click. So here we are with the finished product. On the right is the Vitabox chassis. Again, looking like that standard audio component in your entertainment center. So blending in nicely, a kind of a black brushed metal finish and a nice tilt down door here that exposes a pair of USB ports and a multi-format flash card reader. And uh, a nice trim plate they give you with this chassis to uh, finish off the DVD-ROM drive as well. It goes with it. It's actually metal, so looks great. On the left-hand side is the Thermal Take Element Q. And uh, again, Blu-ray drive here, standard sort of uh, placement for that. And little trap door exposes USB ports as well as front panel audio. So let's fire these up and show you what a home theater PC can do for you. All right, so here we are set up in our entertainment center and we're driving things through a Panasonic 50-inch plasma television. Now, the first thing you can do with a home theater PC versus just a plain old Blu-ray or DVD player in your entertainment center is you can do a little bit of gaming. Here we are playing Battlefield Bad Company 2 at full 1920 by 1080 p resolution. Looking sweet, I might add, on the 50-inch uh, plasma. And of course, we can stream music from our music collection. Of course, we've fired up our Iron Man Blu-ray disc. And as you can see, full 1080p res. Looks great. Sounds great. And flies great. And that is what you can do with a home theater PC. Thanks for joining us. I'm Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware. Thanks for stopping by.